Good afternoon. I'm Greg Braxton with the Los Angeles Times, and we're here today talking with Marie Murray Enos, who you may know from Big Love and The Killing, and is now starring in Amazon Prime's new thriller, Hannah, which she plays a whole type of different yeah. character than, yes. <laughs> than we've seen you before. So yeah. welcome. Thank you. Uh, we're used to kind of seeing you play good people. Yeah. Uh, you're not playing such a good person in Hannah. No. Uh, you're playing a CIA operative who is on the pursuit of this very special teenage girl uh, who uh, you may have uh, been involved in an operation to change her while she was a baby. Yep. She's on the run from you and you're determined to get her. That's what was it like? Uh, Marissa is a very uh, multi-layered character. She has a she has a double life. Uh, talk about Marissa a bit. Well, when David Farr first approached me about the role, he said, "In terms of structure, I'm offering you the the antagonist. Um, I want you to play the bad guy." And and in the film, Kate Blanche's portrayal was absolutely that. She was black and white, the bad guy. Um, the reason David wanted to expand it into a series is that he had this other version in his mind, which was much more grounded and, and um, naturalistic, in which the three leads of the story all have a, a very strange kind of moral compass. They all do things which are, um, which are dark and ugly. They all do things which are altruistic. Um, they all have their very powerful reasons why. And so Marissa absolutely begins as our bad guy, um, but then through the course of, um, of this first series, you, you see the reason that, that she's in pursuit of Hannah is that she's trying to protect a life which she now holds dear. And so it allows at least the audience to have some, some empathy for her, I hope. Now, there are bad people like Kate Blanchett when I mean it was very obvious that she was evil. You play evil in a whole different mm -hmm. way. It's almost snake-like because a, one of your weapons I think is your smile. A uh, very compelling, beguiling smile but that smile's hi hiding so much. Uh, what was part of your preparation in, in, in just sort of getting in the head of, of this person and how she conveys her, her yeah. agenda? Well, I mean, I'm five foot two, so there's a limit to how much I can do with brute force. And so in thinking about people who are powerful in different arenas and the different tools that are at their disposal, it seems like a woman like this, working as a spy, needs to be an incredible liar, and she needs to have a lot of cunning and, and a lot of grace to win people over. And of course, she has physical strength as well. She has that in her back pocket, but it's not what she leads with, which I mean, I think makes her um, feel even more dangerous. Is that fun? Is that it's fun? So fun. That it's, it's so fun. It's so fun. And in <laughs> fact, it was a gift that one of the directors gave me. Um, I mean, I have been thinking about it a lot anyway, but John Jones, who shot our second block, so he shot episodes three and four, he said to me at one point, if you smile at me, I'll give you anything you want. And it was just, it was an affirmation that I was on, on the right trajectory with her, that that was a tool I could use. So is it, is, is it just, it's not only her kindness, but her sexuality that she's also using? Absolutely. When we meet her originally, 15 years before, I, she was much more of um, an adrenaline junkie. I think she was a much more kind of like visceral animal person. And then over the course of these 15 years, she has evolved. She's become a woman in her 40s. You know, she's, she's graceful. She's been living in Paris instead of in the woods of wherever she was, Pol Poland. Um, so she's become more refined, but that animal aspect to her is still underneath and driving her. So it's, it's fun to play with when the grace is in the forefront and when the animal is in the forefront. And she has this double life because she also has a very normal uh, family life, which she's trying to maintain. Yeah. It gets more difficult as she's as she's a as very gets. reasonable boyfriend. She has a very cute stepson. Um, 
And she lies to both of them every day, every day of her life, every day. So you're playing a character with so many secrets. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that fun for you to play? It is. I mean, I'm, I'm always fascinated by the idea of what a secret does to a person. And the darker the secret, the more secrets, the more complicated it is living with that, um, having to cover, and also just what it does to, an, to a person's internal rhythms when they're carrying around, something like that. And, and it's so fun playing with the camera, someone who has a secret that they're hiding from the world, but you get to reveal that to the camera. That's the beauty of film work, is is there, it, the camera's your secret counterpart that you get to reveal yourself to. So is, is, it, is it difficult doing that with, it, I mean, good people have secrets too, so yeah. is, it, is it easier doing it with someone who's evil or someone who's, who's basically good? I think it's the same. I think, I think the stereotype is that people who are evil are better at covering secrets because they have more secrets to, to hide. And so their reveals are, are more subtle. They have better coping mechanisms. And, and basically good people who have dark secrets, like the burden of that is, um, it's harder to hold on to. You know, they, they, they're more willing to, to reveal them. Um, so it, I think for an actor, it's a more fun puzzle to do it with somebody who's evil, but still has something that's gnawing at them. So this this is based on a film. Yes. Uh, did you watch the film? I before? didn't. I didn't watch the film. And you had never seen you had never seen the film before. No, I had never seen the film before. I've heard it's wonderful. Um, I just happened to have missed it for whatever reason. And then after speaking with David Farr about how different he intended the series to be, then I just I didn't see it. Um, when all of this is over and I've I've gotten to do the the full series, then I'll, I'm sure I'll go back. You'll and watch go back it. and yeah. see it. Yeah. So with with did David give you a lot of direction, or did you just no. sort of figure out how you were going? His to writing is so clear. He puts it so much on the page that he actually he wasn't on set day to day. He he would hand it over to four very capable directors, and um, but also there wasn't a lot of mystery like he just he puts it on the page and it's the the writing is so kind of clear and um elegant it's it's quite spare actually but um but at the same time really revealing of what a character's internal life is now one of the joys of of seeing you in this show is you're reunited yeah with your co-star from the killing yes. joel yeah. kinnaman and it's a very, very different dynamic. How did this come about in, in the show? Well, David Farr came to me first, and um, we started a lovely dialogue, and it looked like I was going to be signing on. And at the same time, he asked if I had any names I wanted to throw in the hat for Eric because they hadn't um, cast anyone in that role yet. And so I actually texted Joel and said, do you have any names of 40-something wonderful Eastern European actors? And he, and he was like, I'll get back to you. Let me like brainstorm a little bit. So in the middle of that process, uh, David said, you know, I wanted to run something by you because actually the person at the top of our list is Joel Kinnaman, but I wanted to make sure you would be okay with that before we go out to him. And I mean, I was, you know, it was like music to my ears because Joel is my number one best partner I've, I've ever gotten to play with. And, and you guys uh, kept in touch since the killing? Yeah, we had. We've both been very busy, so we're not always the best at, at getting together, but we have remained friends throughout these years. So getting into this whole different dynamic yeah. in chemistry, yeah. um, did you have any skepticism about that, or, or was that just something that you guys just thought, we can do this, we can really kill this. Yeah, I know, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I don't, I can't speak for him, but I don't think either of us was worried. If anything, we were, um, we were curious and, um, and excited to, to look at each other through very different eyes. Um, in The Killing, we were playing two people that absolutely had each other's back, and yet both both of those characters were hiders. So even though we were we were pals, we were quite private people. And in this, it's the opposite. We are absolute enemies, but we are willing to regard each other with total clarity. And so actually, 
in the first scene that we were shooting, I was like, I don't know that I've ever stared at Joel in this way while on camera. I've never like taken him in in the same way. Um, and that was very exciting. And so the first half of the first scene, we were like, oh my God, this is very different. <laughs> um, but then our flow is the same and the safety of, of that working space is the same. And, um, and I mean, I just, I find him endlessly fascinating as an artist. He, um, he's just willing to go so many places. And so we would find each, ourselves following one another. And, um, and the scenes went so many varied places that once we, when we saw it like all cut together, it was really interesting saying, oh yes, they took that piece in this piece. Because it could have been so many things. What do you think is the, the, the magic between you two? Because obviously, yeah. you know, you had the chemistry and the killing and, right. and you're just going in a whole yeah. different direction here. So how do you define it? Because you've been in the business for so long. Right. Sometimes it clicks. Sometimes, with a, yeah, it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. I mean, part of it is just catching lightning in a bottle, you know. I mean, there are people on the planet that you have a natural affinity for and others that you don't. I mean, I think, I think part of what makes it work is that Joel and I, in general in our life, try to come from a place of generosity. Both of us feel the most expansive, we feel the most joy when we're living in an open and generous place. And then when you take that into work, it means that you're supporting one another, that you're rooting for one another, that you're help, trying to help facilitate each other's best work instead of there being jealousy or pettiness or any of that nonsense that just is like the death of art. Um, instead, you're, you're carrying each other in your pocket, you know, and, and um, it just makes for a happy, happy time. And then also we, we just make each other laugh. You know, so who knows so what that is. Even when, when your characters are trying to kill each other. Completely. So was yeah. that fun when you guys are really just going at it? Totally. And then between takes, you know, we're like, <laughs> we're like laughing. It's the same in The Killing. We'd be doing whatever, you know, very serious scene in the car. And between takes, we'd be like weeping with laughter. It's fun. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So you were talking about playing Marissa and, and your side, you're very petite, but there's one scene, the spo not a, really a spoiler yeah. alert, but there's one scene where there are two guys who are yeah. going to take you out right. and you take them out. And yes. there's no stunt people involved. No, it's there's just one, so, it, so what was that scene like? Awesome, I mean, I, um, I do pr pr uh, practice martial arts. I'm a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. And um, it's a very important part of my life. I love it. And what know, inspired you to do that? I had moved from New York to Los Angeles, and I was desperately homesick. This is, you know, years ago, 12 years ago. Um, homesick for New York, and I just thought, I have to put down roots here and do something new that I has nothing to do with my life in New York City that is only identified with my new life here. And I had done dance growing up and I had done like gym kickboxing and you know random workouts and so I thought well what is, martial arts is something that combines all of these different kind of aspects and who knows. So I looked up three places that were near my house and one was like a hovel and one was closed and then I walked into this beautiful elegant space, open space with fountains running and this elegant Korean man in his uniform that said, how can I help you? And I was sold. I took my first class that night and then, and then I never looked back. And it was very powerful to have um, a system of training that was goal-based that had nothing to do with acting. So no matter what terrible auditions I had had or wh whatever was going on in my personal life, there was a place of belonging that I could show up every night where there was a community that was happy to see me and I could mark my progress. It was a very empowering feeling. And, um, and then I just dig it, like I just really like it. Like um, a lot of people, you know, feel very peaceful doing yoga. I'm the weirdo that yoga makes me like angry. And, <laughs> and but then I'm kicking and punching and I'm like beaming. Um, so anyway, I just, I fell in love with it. And it, even the roles, I mean, I think I would have worked. I, I, I was lucky enough that work always kind of presented itself. But I think the particular career that I've had since starting Taekwondo was changed because of that training. Because even if the roles I was getting 
had nothing to do with fighting. There's, there's a way that you carry oneself when you're training in that way that um, you know where your center is. You know, you lead with, with strength. And, and I think it's, it's provided this amazing array of roles. Um, so anyway, in terms of Hannah, Joel and Esme were getting to do most of the, the fighting. And, um, but there was some rumors that I was going to have a fight late in the series. And, and I kept saying to the fight coordinators, you know, I'm a fighter actually, so I would love to do as much of it as possible. And I have the highest regard for stunt artists. And, but if possible, you know, I would really love to, love to do it. <laughs> and um, so they built this fight, which was totally within my, my wheelhouse. And then the DP figured out a way to shoot it all in one. So we never had to cut. Um, and it was a very exciting day. It was, it was, because you don't expect it. And these two towering guys yeah. are, are surrounding you and they're yeah. just bent on killing you. And then you turn and, <laughs> um, how long did you prepare? I, how, how long did it take to, th I mean, you just did that in one take. D yes, we only shot it three times. Um, the first time was interesting, but it was like all <laughs> adrenaline, you know. So, and then the second time, the um, the cover on the end of my blade uh, came off. So then the fight just came apart because I was worried about hurting people. And um, and then the third time is what you actually see in the show. It's it's a it's a really amazing shot. Thank so you. so it's it's. Thank you. It's, it's, what have since Hannah's been on for a few weeks? Have people responded to it? Have the people come up to you and? Yes, I'm getting a lot of response on the street, which is so wonderful. With the, this new kind of format of shows just dropping out into the ether, it feels hard to know what the reception is, and so it's been great that um, in grocery stores and you know people are coming up and saying, "I'm loving your show." And of course, I'm sure people still come to you and talk about yeah, the killing. Exactly. What, what was that, what did that experience represent for you? That was very, that was a very special experience for me. I, I have loved aspects of everything I've gotten to do, but that felt like a very personal offering. It was my first really big role. Um, and there was the partnership with Joel and the partnership with Venus Sood, who, you know, she's remained a, a dear friend of mine. Who created the killing. Who, yeah, who created the killing. Um, so she's remained a dear friend, and it felt, um, it's very close to my heart. Um, so the fact that it's had a new life, you know, on Netflix, and that people are still discovering it makes me really happy. Are you, are you surprised? It, be, it just became huge. It just became yeah. this huge phenomenon. Yes, uh, it did. Some people had problems, you yes, know, with, with the, the plot structure in yeah, terms of the two right, seasons. Right. Yeah, I think if it had dropped now, if it had come out now, nobody would have batted an eye. People had an expectation that the case would wrap up at the end of season one, which, you know, we just didn't do that. And, and then as much as people love to love us, then they decided to love to hate us for a while. And how did, anyway, that, imp how did that impact it, it you? It bummed me out, you know, because the show actually just kept getting better. I mean, I think season three is the pinnacle of that whole series. And it kind of like came out under the shadow of this, this drama where fans had walked away. And, um, but anyway, um, I think now that people are watching it again in its entirety, I don't, I don't think that there's anyone that feels like there's something out of place. And, and was it more difficult to play, or more, I shouldn't say difficult, but what's more challenging, playing that character or playing Marissa? I don't know. They both, um, they both have their challenges, but they, mm, I don't know. I don't even, I don't even know that I, I, I have this part of my personality, which is like hard is good. And so um, the challenge actually represents the, the fun of it, like the harder it is, the bigger the reward. So, I mean, I got to spend a lot longer with Sarah than I've spent with Marissa, so it's, it feels like it's, it remains to, to be seen, you know, what Marissa's journey is. And Marissa's journey may continue. We hope. We hope, yes. we hope. Yes. Um, we have something called the lightning round, in which I also want to ask you some okay. other okay. questions. I'm these really the bad at the things These like are the this. gotcha questions okay. that I warned you I'm about. I'm going to be terrible. I just. Uh, what was the last show you binge watched? 
my husband's show, Succession, on HBO. Oh, how cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what classic show do you wish you could have been on? Oh, I don't know. Uh, when I was little, I watched Cagney and Lacey. I thought they were really cool. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a classic show. Um, what was your first acting job, and what have you learned about the craft since then? I mean, my very first first or my first important? My let's, let's say first important. First important um, job. My first really important job was a Tom Stopper play. Um, on Broadway with um, Bobby Leonard and Richard Easton, and I was the only girl in a cast of like 25 men. And um, listening to Tom Stoppard, this was at Lincoln Center in New York City, and Tom Stoppard came in and he educated us on the world of the play. And I think it taught me how important the narrative is. If you don't have the story on the page, there's very little you can do. Um, story is everything. And I think that learning that then has, has really like marked the, pro the projects that I've chosen. Okay, so that was your first job. What was your worst job? Not just in acting, but just your <laughs> My worst My job, worst job ever? Just, yes. Oh, I was, I was a hostess at this Italian restaurant in Houston called um, Papa Mia. And um, it just was a slog, you know? It was just like spaghetti all day. And um, yeah, it was just, it was hard. I was like 16 years old and I just wanted to be an actor and I was like carrying bread and, um, you know, but it was all right. It was okay. It was okay. But, 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 but that would be down at the that bottom. That would be down at the bottom, okay. yeah. And what are you most excited about, the Sopranos prequel or the Breaking Bad sequel? Oh, Breaking Bad, 100%. Breaking Bad, and why is that? I mean, those characters—they're just so vivid, you know. And and when a, when a series goes away, you think you have to say goodbye to them forever. So the idea that they're gonna come back is, you know, it's thrilling. It's thrilling. Yeah. Well, gosh, it's been so great talking Likewise. to you, and congratulations on Hannah. Just a Thank great you. job and a great performance. Thank you. And for this and other Contender Chats, please go to latimes.com. Thank you very much for joining us.